Hello everybody, this is me Amin And this is Alex And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About This is a special edition uh, It's Friday the 7th of October We just finished uh, listening to our finance minister Tengku Zafro Tabled uh, Budget 2023 And uh, this is our commentary uh, about the budget And everything that's related to technology uh, That was announced uh, during the budget uh, To be honest, I think the budget was quite underwhelming a bit meh if you ask me a lot of recycled items um, but funnily enough this is one of the biggest budget ever tabled in Malaysia's history uh, 300 over billion 370 plus billion 372 billion ringgit yes budget which is 40 billion more than last year's budget so uh, I'm, I'm, we're not going to pretend that you know we're financial pundits and pundits and going to say that you know this is uh, what what. But from the surface of it, what we see in terms of um, innovation and stuff like that, there's there's nothing stands out in terms of oh wow this is amazing. So it's either a sign that the previous budget was super good, and the initiative that's already been provided is already super good, and they just they're just continuing what's been provided, or the people that made the decisions to uh, create this this budget, or to frame this budget, have ran out of ideas. I feel it's a bit of both. Yeah, I guess like like certain things, right? if it works, we know, just continue it. Some has been extended. Mm. Some they extend and they increase the budget. Mm. Uh, some surprisingly was missing. Um, well, and yeah, let's let's go through the list. Okay, let's go through the, the, uh, the items from the small items to the big ticket items. Yes. So they've extended the package from Major Kluaga Malaysia data plan until April 2023 which is not long f- which is not long lah yeah and also this is like a quite meh lah you ask me because this was actually announced in 2021 uh-huh. so it's aimed at providing affordable internet connectivity mm. to students and youths and mm. so essentially this is a plan where you can get uh, like uh, 20 gigs of data mm-hmm. valid for 3 months for like 30 ringgit mm. and of course on top of that telcos also try to throw in some bundle uh, stuff as well so you can get a free phone if you sign a contract mm. so essentially this is not new uh, it has been extended uh, until April so this has been running since October 2021 mm. and uh, uh, most of the main telcos are still offering this uh, package from Ajak Kologa plans mm. yeah, so just extension for a couple of months extra so yeah. nothing nothing fantastic yeah so I don't know why they announced this it seems like okay so we have to also look at the landscape uh, at the moment right so yep. there's the cloud of GE15 looming uh, there's been a lot of words uh, a lot of rumours saying that you know uh, GE15 will be announced after the budget has been tabled yep so you can consider maybe Monday or tomorrow, I don't know. You have to see the budget in that lens to understand that, okay, some of these um, packages and extension that's been provided is kind of, I would consider it as for the... Candies lah, yeah, sweets lah. Yeah, you know. yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. some goodies for this you. This is, you know, the uh, Clogger Malaysia package, always looking after people and yep. stuff like that. So... So I, I look at it at that lens. So I'm skeptic in that way. Okay, so package Ramaja Keluarga Malaysia, nothing new, extended to 2023, which I think is a bit weird. Why not extend it all the way to December 2023? Because it is budget 2023. And also these kind of plans, right? It's not like the government is forking money. It's actually from the Yeah, it's telcos. absorbed by the telcos. Yeah, it's so. a telcos initiative. It's like, oh, telcos, please come with a plan that's affordable and lasts longer. So yeah, mm. they did this. But mm. to be honest, right, uh, for the plan, like 30 bucks for 20 gigs, there are really cheaper plans out there, to be honest. <laughs> like you do, you can get 20 gigs for 20 bucks. So, so instead of extending it, they should revise it down. Actually, if you want to talk about affordable internet connectivity, mm. Mm. they should do something to improve the quality and to bring the price down. <laughs> DMB. Later, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, that's why I say this thing is meh. Yeah. I, do, I don't know what they're doing. So, it's like, okay, that's one. And then, the next line item on the budget 2020 that we want to focus on is the... 200 ringgit e-wallet credit for youths and M40 groups under the e Pemula program. Yeah, so sounds na- familiar. This one. Yeah, so they're extending it and increase the budget and to cover more people because last year, um, yeah, last year's I see three this year, 2022, mm. uh, e pro- e program for youths, um, they're giving out 150 ringgit e-wallet credit. Mm-hmm. So for next year, they are increasing that to 200 million. Sorry, 200 ringgit mm. per person. Mm. So they they allocate a budget of 400 million, which will cover two million youths. So youths include youths and M40. Uh, youths for from age 18 to 20, mm-hmm. and also for full time students age 21 and above. Mm. And for M40, that's a different Pumula program. So okay. there's now a new M uh, E Pumula for M40. So mm. if you are four under this group, uh, which they define as 
having an annual income of less than 100,000 ringgit, mm. you get 100 ringgit a uh, e-wallet credit. So they're allocating 800 million ringgit for this, which mm. will benefit 8 million and 40 people. So this is the candy that we talked about. Yeah, so 1.2 billion ringgit yep. worth of e-wallet credits. Mm. Yay, go. Okay, so I understand, you know, but, uh, tabling of the budget is usually top line items. It's very general. Yes. The specificity of it and how you execute it the details will come later. Yes. Um, the people that will be executing this will, will have the headache to think about that. Yeah. But there are certain things that I think the government or, you know, Tengku Zafro, um personally have to also tackle. I remember with regards to the e-permula program, there was a problem with claiming the f- uh, the, the money. Yeah, especially how you disperse from 150 yeah, ringgit. How the funds are dispersed. Yeah, because he says one time credit, mm. one off. Mm. And we mentioned in the previous show that, you know, uh, Grab especially, um, they do things differently. Yep. Instead of giving you 150 ringgit, they mm. give you 150 ringgit worth of vouchers, mm-hmm. which means that you, and in different denominations. Yes, you can. it's like a coupon. La. You cannot yeah. stack the vouchers, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. So yes. it's like forcing you to buy. To pay more, yep. actually you're paying more to use the 200. So it's like, okay, yes. we have 200 ringgit worth of vouchers, but to use these vouchers, you got to have a minimum purchase of more than 200 ringgit if you total it up. Lah. Yeah, and then he said here clearly, this is credit, you don't pay. It's uh-huh. credit, don't give vouchers. So yeah. after the incident, right, we don't see any action from Instagram. Yeah, finance. there was no reprimand, there yeah. was no uh, clarification. clarification. Yes. So I don't know whether Grab will be doing that again, but what I know is this: the e-wallet players will again try to look at this and try to be cr- as creative as possible to report to the government. Yes, we've already fulfilled the budget. So, so they, so this is allocated funds, right? So what what happens is the government is going to provide the funds to the e-wallet operators, whoever they choose. Right? So it could be, it, my, I think my guess would be Touch and Go, Grab. Uh, boost and faith I don't know depends. but boost Dep- and faith I think is out la. depends la, because um, normally the list changes on a uh, different year because I think previously they are more evil players this time they are Shopee and all that mm. so it really depends on who they want to partner with this mm. time around but I think Grab and, and Touch and Go will yes. be like there they, definitely they are the main players so what's going to happen is uh, the funds will, be, will, will come from the government okay we're going to send this out to you uh, you can claim it and then make sure you utilize it for the RM two hundred ringgit yep. thing. So what the uh, what the wallets will do is like, okay, we have these funds now. How do we make it look like we gave two hundred, mm-hmm. but we don't actually give two hundred? So whatever that the difference, we're gonna pocket it. Yeah, because we mentioned before, right? Like, what happens if a person don't spend it? Because it's written in terms that you know, if you don't spend by a certain date, mm. you'll be forfeited. So I assume that that money should go back to the government. No, it's pocketed. Yeah, so if it's gonna be if it's vouchers, right? They can be recorded as oh, it's claim already as yeah. vouchers. So it's, it's confirmed going to be yeah. claim. So right, yeah. and then if there's no reprimand, right? So mm. we pro- we proceed that I think more e wallet players will be more creative with handling the credit. Yeah, so, so that's scary. So you know, again, that's why I'm saying that this budget is meh because the top line item is there, but it seems like it's not forward thinking enough or not. It's not smart enough to say that, okay, these are the things that we need to look into. It's very, still very gen- general and, 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 and top line. And the best part, best part is, what's the intention of giving this money? Because last time, right, was to... Candy. Last time, it was mentioned clearly, oh, this to increase, you know, adoption. COVID-19. Blah, blah, blah. Now, it's not mentioned. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, we did 150 ringgit last year. So, yeah. now we're going to continue with 200 ringgit. And we in- introducing M40. Yeah, and then yeah. they didn't mention like for what, what? Is it, what is it for? Uh-huh. And then remember like the last the the, the last one, right? They yeah. limit to like retail transactions only. Yes. So that's to promote uh retail or cashless mm. cashless transactions. Mm-hmm. But this one there's no mention like what's the object, what's the objective? Yeah. Yeah, it's like here you go, free money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my comment on this is I would really like for the government or whoever that's gonna execute this to really tighten the strings and really draw the dr- outline clearly in terms of what needs to be executed for these e-wallet operators to provide the funds to the people that really need need, need it. Yep, that's right. Okay, the next line item on the budget that we want to pay attention to is the 73 million ringgit that will be allocated to tackle cybersecurity threats and improve cyber forensic system capabilities. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you think about that? I, I got my thoughts. I think mm-hmm. it's... Okay... I think it's BS, but I want to know what you think. Well, I mean, yeah, you're putting money to tackle a scam, but uh, be, like, like we said, similar to Ewola, right? execution-wise, like, yep. how you, okay, how are you going to make use of the money to yep. tackle 
cybersecurity threats, mm. uh, you know, scams and all that stuff. Mm. Because we mentioned earlier, you know, it can be done by policy level, education, all that stuff, yep. but we're not seeing the results of yeah. it. And also, there's a lot of data leaks that's happening all around, mm. and we don't see any action. Like, for example, the recently there's a payment gateway uh, leak. Mm. Um, it was reported, like, it happened, like, a few months ago. Mm. Only now it's reported. Mm. And then we don't see any action taken. So yeah. I'm not really convinced that, you know, this budget will be utilized to the max to to his right intention unless I can be proven wrong yeah I think you nail it on the head to say that oh just throw money at the problem and the problem might go away yep. but the problem is it's not money cyber security and privacy and all that in Malaysia and all the issues that's been happening in Malaysia is not a money problem it's not like you need more money to be more secure it's not like it's something physical because why I say this is because the basic things right so um data accountability uh, handling of the data the privacy and everything i don't think it's been done well in the country and the uh, our custodians of these data so we've covered leaks from uh jabatan pendaftaran negara we covered leaks from payment gateways payment gateways telcos and all Airlines that one, yep. and when when these leaks happen the 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 people who are not to say responsible but the the people who are supposed to police and monitor this don't say anything. Yeah, they say, oh yeah, we report, we receive a report and then we look into it and then we don't see the results, we don't see any steps to improve it. Yeah. And then like the in this budget, uh, bef- he mentioned that, you know, um, he's, he mentioned that oh, there's the rise of online scams and then it's becoming mm-hmm. a very serious global pandemic and mm-hmm. he said that langkah untuk membendung jenai scam, the steps that's required to take immediately is number one, to to create like a scam response center involving PDRM, Benegal, blah, 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 blah. Secondly, is to tighten the security of online banking and three is to provide a platform where people can complain. I've seen people complain about scams. I don't see any action taken about it. Like we mentioned about the scams involving this doctor who who came to who lost 13,000 ringgit from Bank Negara, right? Yep. We don't see like proactive action like Singapore we mentioned, yep. right? They say, okay, no more links in SMS. Mm. That's not done here. Mm. And then you reduce the the threshold that we don't see that proactiveness and deadline from the government. So where is this money going through? Going to, right? So you say uh, it's a hotline, call center, support center, whatever it is, right? Mm. The problem with that is that's that most of the time when people call a support center is when when they have a problem and the the thing with that is that's that means that the scam has already happened and the thing is this it seems like all these elements okay you say the police the, mm. the platform all that mm. right they're all working in silos like for example right when someone reports a scam right mm. on online on a, on a scam that's happening right mm. like let's say someone click on ad on facebook mm. goes to a page and then they transfer money right when you report to the police and all that right a lot of people complain that or go to mcmc yeah go to mcmc yeah. all that the accounts are still running yep the ad is still on the platform yep it's not taken down mm. like what's going on by right is the police should take action call the platform okay take this ad now immediately mm. and investigate it's mm. easy to trace like yeah. funds being transferred to another online yes. bank account you can trace back yep. and when people complain oh I got scammed mm. and, it's, and then the, the banks will say oh sorry uh, we, okay we take no your report yeah. we try our best to recover the money but uh, no guarantees yeah. and that account is still there like hello yeah and then and then the the um, the basic answer is oh it, it, because you've the, the difficult thing to get the money back is because you you transfer the money yep that means you give the money and by law it's quite difficult for us to get it back. Yeah. So back to the point, right? Is this a 73, 73 million ringgit problem? Is cyber is is cybersecurity and cyber forensic a seventy three million dollar problem? It is not. It is it is it is a problem that has a cash value, but that cash value is not because it needs more money, but that cash value is the money that um, that victims have been losing. Mm-hmm. We've been covering a lot about grandmothers losing millions, lonely people losing millions. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to say that, you know, it's their fault, and and there's no uh, victim blaming here. But the fact of the matter is, is not a money problem, but it is a it is a enforcement problem. Bank Nagara, we've mentioned it before, has not been forthcoming in terms of what needs to be done. They've not shown their fang to the banks and e-wallet operators to say like, okay, this is what needs to be done. The police is not working with the bank negara to to like uh, tackle uh, uh, scam and cybersecurity issues. And then uh, MCMC is being super quiet. 
So now, we've been talking about scams where people lose money. Yes, that's one of the biggest pain points in terms of the consumers and, and people who are facing that problem because you lose money and yep. that's where it hurts. If you look at uh, the line item uh, that 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 this 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 budget this point is tabling with it 73 million to tackle cybersecurity threats and improve cyber forensics. Yeah. So that covers leaks. Yes. Data leaks uh, from you know big data uh, pools and and stuff like that. Then we say okay that's irrelevant because we're talking about scam and we're talking about leaks. No, it's relevant because these scams and the people that target you because it comes in waves they don't target one by one they send by batches of thousands uh and these batches of thousands the data that they get the email the phone number comes from these leaks leaks and then so far in terms of leaks right we've seen a lot of leaks right and then we don't see anyone being hold accountable we don't see any follow up like okay how this happened we want to know how what's been done to stop yeah. this from happening yeah. so like Every time there's leaks, right? Oh, it wasn't me. Mm. Someone is leaks for someone else, mm. like the JPN issue. Until now, we don't know where is the leak from. Oh, it's like oh, the leak happened, but we got it sorted. Yeah, or something like that. And yeah. it's like, hello, you need to answer the public because you need to reassure public that 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 is safe. But until now, it feels like as if all information is up in the air right now. Yeah, Ev- yeah. Don't assume that your data is private, private. anymore. No, it's not. I mean, look, look at this. We even covered that the prime minister's uh, telegram, account. telegram account was even hacked. hacked. So yes. what's going on, man? Yes. So I don't agree with this. It's not the money issue. Yeah, you can fund the thing, but mm. that's not the solution to the online scams. Yeah. It needs more needs to be done, policy level, regulatory, and all that stuff. Yep. All right. So that's that. Now let's let's go to the next line item in the budget that we think is quite interesting to to talk about. Is the CBU EV? Okay. So the 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 tax exemption for. Imported EV vehicles. There's three things, right? Yep. Yeah. So you want to break that down? So one is the import, the import excise duty exemption. Mm. So suppose end of this year, end mm-hmm. end of this year, but it has been extended until the end of 2024. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, there's also no AP fees for EVs until the end of 2023. Mm. And uh, government has also announced 100% tax exemption for EV charging manufacturer for like 10 years from mm. 2023 to 2032. So mm. that supposedly encourage more EV related industries in Malaysia. Yeah. So again, uh, big uh, ticket items. Uh, I, I, there are good things here, but again, it's not smart things. It's just like taking a sledgehammer and whacking the wall and. Trying to kill a fly using that sledgehammer. I ho- I hope you understand where where w- my analogy here. So you give tax exemption for people to adopt uh, EV, right? So EV vehicles would be cheaper to buy. I would say to buy only, not to adopt. Yes, yes. to buy, right? Yes. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you invite people to come and manufacture EV charging stations in the country. And then number three is AP. So that one is is another adoption. So AP also is about. The people who, the great importers. So if you don't know, if you go to any secondhand car store or recon, yeah, car car lot, yeah. uh, there's going to be a deluge of Teslas coming in from Hong Kong, coming in from the UK, and this is going to benefit them mostly. My concern here is where is the money going to the development of the capabilities to service and support this industry? Where is it coming from? Uh, there's going to be tons of EV vehicles coming into the country. There'll be more people buying EV vehicles. There'll be cheaper and cheaper EV vehicles available available for more people. There'll be more charging stations. Now, the problem with charging stations is, and if you're using EVs, right, the problem with charging station is number one is not that charging stations are not available. I think that's the smaller problem. The bigger problem is the available charging stations don't work. And then after that, we talk about the tariffs, right? How much does it cost for you to charge uh, your car? That's not that's not mentioned. Although we have to say that there's also some allocation for TMB to develop solar panels, panels and, and also EV charging station themselves. So this is TNB X. Yeah, so Gentari by Petronas. Yeah, but again, you know, um, who's going to maintain these things? Uh, the the What about the development of applications that's going to support this? Where do I find charging stations and stuff like that? It doesn't mention. It doesn't mention that. And also another thing, going back to the to the EVs, right? So we've seen a lot of benefits of importing EVs, mm. but I don't see anything to encourage local production of EVs. Yep. Like until now, right? We don't see Purudua or 
or proton, creating mm. even hybrid vehicles. Well, Perdra brought the hybrid uh, uh, Ativa. Yeah, but that's CBU <laughs> and it's not locally assembled. Like, you know, they don't see it instantly. So if you want to be like an EV hub, mm. right? So far, the only one that does it is Volvo with the XC40 and yep. the C40. But yep. we don't even see local players. So I don't see any encouragement for local players or even foreign companies to yeah. come in to make EVs in Malaysia. Yes. So because that will create more jobs and that will also increase our local capability in making EVs. Okay. So at the end, we're just more like consumer rather than manufacturer. Yeah. So we're just net importers yes. rather than manufacturers. So let's say, okay, let's let's flip this and let's try to analyze this. Okay. I want to say like, is this laying the groundwork for Malaysia to be the hub of EV in the, in the, in the region? I'm not sure because it doesn't promote the development of e- EV batteries, for example. Yeah, like Indonesia does, right? Yeah, it's doesn't. Yeah, doesn't encourage people to manufacture batteries here. That that can help the country for the whole. Uh, that can help the country be a hub for the whole region. Just building, just getting people to manufacture chargers here means it's only looking at adoption in the country rather than developing this business for the whole region. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, people will love the tax incentives. Uh, the, the biggest question for consumers, I guess, those who have ordered vehicles now, because there was a deadline yep. for the tax incentives. So those who have ordered vehicles now, uh, what happened? Right? So apparently there's a deadline. So there's, if you miss the deadline, you only get 50%. After that deadline, you get 0% yep. in terms of tax incentives. So now those who have ordered before, do they get a back 100%? Uh, not be mentioned. So there's it's no, up. There's it, no extension to that though. The it, sales tax incentive. Yeah. There's, there's no. There's no extended. So it ends already last year. Oh, sales tax is different. Sales tax is different. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For this, purely for EVs. Yep. All right. So let's move on to the next line item. Okay. So the next line item on budget 2023 that's on our list is uh, DMB is going to spend 1.3 billion ringgit to achieve 70% 5G population coverage by the end of next year. Yeah. If I recall correctly, DNB is supposed to get their own funds. Yeah, because it was mentioned countless times. It's mm. mentioned by Tanko Zafru. It was mentioned by Rah Marshall that DNB will be fully privately, will be privately funded. Mm-hmm. Last time you mentioned the budget was like 15 million or 16.5 billion mm-hmm. ringgit and that will be funded by the gov- by funded, funded privately and it was mentioned that it, there's no government funding or government guarantees. Mm-hmm. So for it to be announced in the budget, the, What's going on? Is it implying that the government is going to use public funds to fund this project for 1.3 billion ringgit? Because um, at the moment, DMB is still 100% owned by the Ministry of Finance. Mm-hmm. Because uh, initially, they were supposed to have the equity deal. Yep. They're supposed to give a 70% equity to telcos. Yep. That hasn't been sorted out yet. Mm. So at, even despite that challenges of not having telcos on board, mm. they're still rolling out the network as we speak today. They're still mm-hmm. rolling out. So mm. as of today... I think they are doing more than 30% population coverage. Mm. They're still running a network. So obviously it needs money. So mm. where does it come from? Mm. So with this announcement of 1.3 billion, it raises the question, is the government funding this? Or is it funded by the private sector? Well, I think the answer is clear. It's mentioned in the budget. Usually for me, when I watch the budget, there's there's a, there's two things. Number yep. one is initiatives. Yep. So initiatives are usually... Co- uh, cooperations or collaborations between the private sector and the public sector. Yep. Meaning that, okay, let's say telcos, we need to increase double the internet speed and half the at half the price. Yep. Okay, that is the government's promise. Yep. Then the government will go and talk to the telcos. Okay, guys, this is what we're planning to do. How do you guys, how can you help to make it happen? That's initiative, right? Then there will be allocations. So allocation is very easy to understand because it's an allocation of money, right? So yep. there'll be there will be mention of like, okay, this is the X amount. amount and it will go to where. Yep. So the fact that it says 1.3 billion and and it's going to 5G development and there's only one 5G developer in the country, I mean, doesn't take, <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. Here's the funny thing, right? So there's no mention of like, so instead of giving the money, 1.3 billion, right? Where is the encouragement to get the foreign investment that Tengku Zafo has been threatening telcos? Why need to give investment? He's, why do you need to give incentives? He said that they're lining up at the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Dying again in the Malaysian market. Uh, to, to invest in a cost recovery model. <laughs> so, that's 1.3 billion down the drain. Lah. I'm not, I don't know, man. So, you can argue, people can say that, okay, you know, at least they're building the network and people are using it. People there's, are using there, it. There is no <laughs> report 
I mean, if the government is confident that people are already jumping onto the 5G bandwagon, there is no report on the adoption rate or the utilization of the 5G network in the country. Mm-hmm. There's been a report on Ukla to say that, you know, our 5G network is one of the fastest in the world or something like that. Yep. Which is not an accurate representation of the utilization of the network because like we've 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 we spoke about this during that episode that we talked about. An empty highway, you can go Speed, as fast yeah. as you want, lah. It's an autobahn, personal autobahn for you. Yeah. So where is the number of number one? I need to know how many devices. I think MCMC can pull out this number. How many devices that people are using in the country are already 5G enabled? They can give this number. 5G so, enabled is one thing. But uh, how many are are there on the 5G network? Okay, that's so a different. So question. that's where I'm starting from. Yeah. First, we need to know the pool of mm-hmm. ca- people that can use the 5G network. Yep. Because then we know like then we can have a percentage. We can have like a yep. delta. This is the number of people that have 5G phones, and these are the number of people that are using 5G, uh, five the 5G network. So if the delta is small, means that we have a high adoption rate of those who have 5G equipment to, that use the 5G network. I'm assuming we have. I mean, a considerable number. I'm not, I'm not assuming. I have a feeling that we have a considerable number of 5G phones in the country because 5G phones are getting cheaper and cheaper. People are just putting that. Or you can get one for like 800 ringgit or something less like that. Less than that, yeah. Yeah, so you can get 5G phones for less than that. So I'm assuming that almost maybe 80, 90% or 100, not 100%, 90% of phones in the country is 5G? New phones. Yeah, yep. new phones, right? Yep. But I don't know anybody... That's on 5G. Hey, I am using 5G. <laughs> He's not using 5G. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I know that you're using that. So I know yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but the percentage is small. I can tell. It's okay, minuscule. I, I feel that it's going to be less than. I think one percent will be a stretch. I feel. Yes. Yes. No, but why? Why must Alex guess? Why can't DNB, the government, MCMNC, give us the numbers if they want to encourage us to adopt 5G? And they want to spend 1.3 billion to achieve 70% um, 5G population coverage by the end of next year. Why not tell us, okay, this is where we're going. People must use it. People must use it. People must use it. Why not you allocate the money to get operators to promote 5G services? The way I look at it, right, I think they should focus more on getting the major tech costs on board and you don't need to talk about money because it, it should, the network should pay for itself. Now, let's go to the other line item uh, on uh, Budget 2023. Jendela. Yeah, let's talk about Jendela. Yeah, so Jendela phase two. So the eight billion ringgit will be allocated, but this also includes contribution by the industry to you know to increase the four G internet uh, coverage up to hundred percent in populated areas, and to increase fiberization to cover nine million uh, premises. So fiber pass premises by twenty twenty five. So uh, Jendela phase one is ending end of this year. Mm. So so far they hit kind of a bit kind of on track uh, in terms of um, increasing 4G coverage up to like ninety six percent point ninety six point nine percent. They're close to that already. Uh, Fiber plus uh, premises is really close to seven point five million. So phase one is really there. But we mentioned this before, right? Although you hit your targets, right? What does it mean to consumers? Because MCMC is giving out numbers. Oh yeah, the 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 average speed is on on track on target, but there's still a lot of people complaining that you know the, they're not getting good speeds, mm. and then they they're getting terrible coverage, drop mm. calls and all that stuff. So complaints are still there, but on one side, government say, oh, we hit our targets. Mm. So generally wise, again, money is going to be spent. Like I mentioned, I think the theme of this budget is like, okay, money. We're just gonna we're just gonna throw money. Yeah. We're just going to throw money, whether it's efficient spending, whether it's prudent spending, whether it's good spending or not. I don't know. They don't know. We're yep. just going to throw this money. Yep. And then, of course, if let's say we didn't have this 5G stalemate, right, I think we could have done much better in terms of connectivity problems. For sure. We have wide 5G access by now. Yep. 5G can be used at rural areas, actually 700 megahertz to cover areas that has poor internet. Yep. And then with access 700 megahertz, you know, they can deploy more towers mm. that has wider coverage. Yep. But no, we don't have 700 megahertz for the telco. So, missed opportunity. Uh, it's not missed opportunity. It's wasted opportunity. Yep. Missed opportunity is different because you tried to get it, you didn't get it. That's missed. Yep. This one, it's there. You have all the control to create that opportunity, but you just throw it away. Yep. It's wasted. Okay, the final item is, uh, this is nothing much. Uh, it's TMB is given 25 million ringgit to bring high-speed broadband to 60,000 rural Malaysians. Which is, what the hell, la, seriously? I mean, can, can, can the government decide how really they're going to tackle 
um, high speed broadband in rural areas. At first, they say they're gonna deploy satellites, lah. Then they say 5G is gonna be one of the solutions, lah. Now they're gonna give 25 million to spend on 60,000 people. Yeah, to rural connectivity because 25 yep, million to spend on 60,000 people. Does yep. that make sense or not? When we have technology like 5G and satellite to deploy to these rural areas. This for this one, I think it's different. This is uh, more for fixed broadband for fiber. Yeah, but so, what I'm trying to say mm-hmm. is, why w- why do you want to spend this money to deliver fixed fixed broadband when the messaging to to people is when we talk about rural uh, rural Malaysians, they say, oh, we we can fiberize as much already. We've already fiberized as much as we can, and to reach this 10% rural people or whatever, it's other technology, it's, and not mm-hmm. and not fixed broadband. Well, they, they've yeah. been saying that, right? Well, they have fiber. So, I know, yeah. but basically, this is just giving business to TMB, lah. It's a grant, so yeah. Well, it's giving business to TMB. Well, at least it's something. I mean, because <laughs> for rural connectivity, there's a lot of multiple uh, of factors, lah. You can use raw 4G, you can raw 5G, you can use satellite, you can use fiber. So I think, like you said, lah, like we mentioned, they're just throwing money everywhere. Okay, here, <laughs> let's throw money and see which one sticks and see what happens. Yeah, it's based. What I see here is like TMB needs. TMB wants to develop fiber. They don't have much, much money, or yes. they they want to spend much money. Say, hey, bro, 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 can you make it into a grant and give it to me? I'll 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 tell the story lah. Uh, to give it to sixty thousand rural Malaysians, where I don't know, for what I don't know. After they use the internet, what happens? I don't know. Who's going to maintain? I don't know. Just give the money lah. Yeah, well, we can we can really tell that uh, among the fiber operators, they are not uh, spending as much as the rest. Even like Jendela, they had they are actually falling behind target in terms mm. of fiber rollout. So in terms of fiber, for those who don't know, TM is still leading. Obviously, they have oh, been yeah. they have been pushing up more fiber coverage. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the last Jendela report, um, Alo is falling behind, and they were saying that it was due to um, shortfalls of shortage of materials. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> yeah, they're behind. So they only achieved 26% of their fiberization target for last quarter. Because connectivity is not their main business. Yep. Connectivity is like, okay, let's try this. Let's try to disrupt. They're just playing around. They're not committed to deliver connectivity. They've never gone out to say TNB is about developing modern lifestyle in terms of like connectivity and power. They're not They're, they're not combined, combining these two together. They're still a power company. Company and a utility company. Yeah, they have uh, TMBX, the digital arm or whatever it is. Again, those are experimental. I'm not seeing like where TMB is going to take themselves into the 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 the, the next level. Yeah, they used to be so gung ho doing NFCP, you know, yeah. with the projects and all that. After the pandemic, the fiber business, I don't know, it's very quiet. Yeah, yeah, because now they have EVs and all this. They have a lot to focus on yeah. in their core business. Exactly. So, not really something that they they really care about, to be honest. Okay, is there anything else? I think that's pretty much it on my list. Yep, I think nothing much lah. The rest is just okay. Got additional tax cuts here and there, uh, tax exemptions here and there, and that's pretty much it for tech lah. Mm. Yeah. Prentice is what didn't yeah. mention whether it's continued or not. No, so no we don't know whether the deliverables of the Prentice is what is going to be done or completed by the end of this year, or is it going to be extended? This okay. The tabling of the budget is for next year's expenditure. So whatever that's allocated last year, there was mentioned last year is for this year. So they have so to finish it. They have they, they two get, more months. Yeah, they have the budget to do it. Mm. So basically, there's no from looks of it, there's no part two. Mm. Yeah. So this the, the Prentice is what ends this year because it was so terribly done. It was delayed, and then the people that's already that 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 is going to get rich from it is already probably gotten rich from it, lah. I don't know, lah. <laughs> I don't say anything. Prove me wrong. Okay. I'll tell everybody just prove me wrong. Okay, where the, uh, okay, we'll talk about Francis well, maybe in another episode. But we already talked about it. Where the money go? How the money can be better spent? How you shouldn't use a, a dealer distributor? You should straight away go to the brand, uh, and manufacturer and get the the devices from there and it will be cheaper. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, overall, budget is meh. Um, what do you think? What grade would you give the budget in terms of technology? <sighs> okay, that's a grade. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all I can say. <sighs> which is also, which also means meh. 
All right, everybody. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you if you if you if you like, we are available on podcast, so you can watch uh, and listen to us on podcast. Um, just search for Sorry Chin Chow. Let's talk about we're there. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, thanks very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um. Uh, As always, comment suggestions. Your thoughts on the budget. Your thoughts on the government spending. Your thoughts on the seventy-three million ringgit, a bill, million billion, whatever ringgit that would be spent. Seventy-three million million ringgit that would be spent Sorry. on cyber security and cyber forensic. Is it is it worth the money? If you're listening to us on podcast, you can also drop us a voice note. So. Uh, to to share your thoughts, so drop drop us a voice note at let's talk about at soyachincha dot com, and we'll be very happy to hear from you guys. Okay, that's pretty much it. This is me, Amin. This is Alex. Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.